Do you worry that you'll be stuck with medical bills and you won't get money for pain and suffering if a car hits you while you're a pedestrian? Well, I'm going to show you how pedestrian accident claims work from beginning to end so that you have the best odds of getting paid. In most cases, the settlement will be paid by the insurance company of the driver who hit you. But in order to get your case moving, a claim needs to get set up. That's the first step in the process of getting you paid. After your claim is set up, you'll get a claim number. Every accident gets its own unique claim number. This is how the driver's insurance company keeps track of your claim. There are generally two ways that a claim is set up with the at-fault driver's insurance company. Number one, the car or truck driver who hit you reported the claim to their insurance company. Or number two, you or your lawyer report the claim to the driver's insurance company. In many accidents where a car or truck hits a pedestrian, there isn't damage to the vehicle. And as a result, the driver often won't report the accident to their insurance company. They hope that you won't make a claim and they don't want their insurance company to raise their rates, especially with the current cost of living being out of control. Five freaking bucks for blueberries? To get a claim number, the insurance company for the driver who hit you needs a few things. Number one, the date when the car or truck hit you. Number two, the policy number of the driver who hit you. And number three, a short description of how the accident happened. If you had any property damaged in the accident, tell the insurance company. I've had cases where the impact caused my clients watch your cell phone to break. The driver's insurance company will also ask you if you were injured in the accident. This is usually the bigger part of the pedestrian accident claim. The insurance company will ask you about your specific injuries so that they can assign the right level adjuster to your case. So be as specific as possible about your injuries. For example, if you have pain traveling down your neck or back to your hand or your leg, tell the insurance company that this could be a herniated disc. More experienced adjusters handle larger pedestrian accident claims like those involving surgery, broken bones, or a brain injury. Once a claim is set up, the car insurance company will start its investigation. Now, just because an insurance company gives you a claim number does not mean that you will get paid. This is a major mistake that people who are hit by cars make. They assume that they'll get paid just because the insurance company has given them a claim number. Maybe they heard that pedestrians always have the right of way. This is completely wrong. In order for you to get paid, multiple things need to happen. First, the at-fault driver's insurance company needs to confirm that there is insurance coverage for your accident. Let me quickly explain. At the time of the accident, the driver of the car or truck that hit you usually gives their insurance card to the police officer. But just because they have an insurance card that hasn't expired, it does not mean that there is coverage. For example, their auto insurance coverage may have been canceled after they got that insurance card. I've seen this happen in many cases. In order for there to be insurance coverage, the driver's insurance policy needs to be active on the day that they hit you. In other words, the owner of the car must have paid their insurance bill. Also, there can't be an exclusion in their policy that would cause a denial of coverage. The most common denial is that the driver is not listed on the insurance policy. Sometimes people who own cars try to save money by not telling their insurance company about every person who is 15 or older that they live with. I've seen car insurance companies deny coverage for failing to tell them about everyone who lives at their home who is 15 years or older. Remember, you're dealing with car insurance companies and they love to deny claims, especially the cheaper insurers. If you had property damage when the car or truck hit you, the insurance company will assign a representative to handle your property damage. If you're injured, they'll assign a separate adjuster to handle your personal injury claim. This adjuster is called a bodily injury liability adjuster or BI adjuster. They're the one who pays you for your pain, suffering, medical bills, and for the money you missed for not being able to work. If the driver's insurance company clears coverage, this means that there is coverage for your claim, which is fantastic, but it's just another step in your case. This is because the adjuster still needs to determine two things. Number one, fault, which is also called liability, and number two, your damages and injuries. To determine fault, the insurance adjuster will look at the traffic crash report. They will also try to speak with several people about how the accident happened. They'll wanna speak with number one, their driver, number two, the pedestrian you, and number three, any witnesses. They'll wanna take your recorded statement. However, since you don't have a contract with them, you are usually not required to give them one. One trick that auto insurance adjusters often use is that they tell you that they need to take your recorded statement in order to move your claim forward. That's as wrong as a plastic flower pretending to be real. I've settled many pedestrian accident cases for $100,000 or more where the at-fault driver's adjuster never took my client's statement. The insurance adjuster will then assign a certain percentage of fault to the driver and to the pedestrian. They may assign anywhere from zero to 100% fault on the driver that hit you. In most states, if you're 51% or more at fault for getting hit, the driver doesn't owe you a penny. 
but please don't automatically assume that you're at fault, even if the police officer gives you a ticket. Next, the insurance company will want to get your medical bills and records. They'll ask you to sign a medical authorization so that they can get your records. You are generally not required to sign the medical authorization. The insurance company will set a reserve to pay your personal injury claim. The reserve is the most probable amount that they'll owe given the information that they have. By law, they are required to set money in an account to pay your claim. The amount could be anywhere from $0 to a huge number if your injuries are big. As the insurance company gets more information, they can either increase the reserve or lower the settlement reserve. Your goal is to get them to increase the settlement reserve as quickly as possible. To do this, either you or your lawyer will get your medical records and bills for treatment related to the accident. Send those bills and records to the insurance adjuster. You'll also wanna send the insurance company receipts for any property that was damaged when the car or truck hit you. Take photos of your damaged property and send that to the adjuster also. It takes time for insurance companies to increase their settlement reserve. It's not something that happens immediately. Yet I see so many people who are hit just sit back and not get their medical records and bills quickly to the adjuster. They incorrectly assume that just because the insurance company hasn't asked you for a specific record or bill that they don't need it. The claims adjuster will never care about your case as much as you do and it's not their fault. Your case is likely just one of the 75 or more cases that they have at any given time. Not getting the insurance company your medical records and bills fast will delay your settlement. Even though car insurance companies have tons of cash, they didn't get this way by giving adjusters total control. This means that the adjuster still likely needs authorization from the claim supervisor to pay you. For example, in a case where a car hit a pedestrian and broke his leg, the BI adjuster needed the approval from the claim supervisor to pay us the $100,000 policy limits. And if you have a huge injury, your claim may need more than one level of approval. Here's a pro tip. Don't just wait and give all of your medical records and bills to the insurance adjuster at once. That's a bad strategy. That's like waiting until your phone dies to charge it. The insurance adjuster will have a settlement range they can settle your case within. Unfortunately, they won't tell you what this range is. If they do, they are likely lying. Your goal is to settle your case at the top of this range. But I found that most pedestrians hit by a car settle for way below the upper limit of the insurance company's settlement range. And that's because they don't know how to build up their case against the driver who hit them. And in the video that's on screen and in the description below, I show you just how to do that by analyzing a pedestrian accident. So watch that video now. And if you've been hit by a car or truck in Florida and you're seriously injured and you think that the driver may be at fault, click on the link in the description below to see if I could be the attorney for you.